SpongeBob. I'm sure most of us have very fond memories of the show, those memories probably being mostly in our childhood. And the thing about childhood is that you are blissfully ignorant. Ignorant of the weird, disturbing, and sometimes outright evil things that surrounded your favorite yellow anthropomorphic talking sponge. And all of your favorite shows and TV characters for that matter. But now that you're an adult, you're so lucky to be able to find fan art of your favorite characters doing unspeakable acts, full on fan fiction of them being psycho killers, and you're especially lucky to find out that most of the creators of your favorite shows are absolute creeps and just in general horrible people. Um, not to name names, <clears throat> Dan Schneider. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Hamster, and if you didn't read the title of this video, or if you just wanted a reminder, in this video, I will be exploring every single tier in this Spongebob iceberg made by this Reddit user. If you're unfamiliar with iceberg videos, the more you go down the iceberg, the more weird or disturbing or elusive or obscure the topic is. This video is a compilation of parts one through three of my previous Spongebob icebergs, so if you've already seen all three parts, this won't be anything new for you. But if you haven't seen the others or are just wanting to support me more, then this is more convenient than video hopping. Topping. Quick disclaimer, I will not be covering every single entry and every single tier. I cut out the ones that were too NSFW or didn't have enough interesting information to cover. I will leave the link to the Reddit post where I found this iceberg on and links to all the resources that I used to research all of these entries. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's get into the iceberg. Tier one, Normie's fun. First entry that I'm going to cover is Handsome Squidward. I feel like most people already know about Handsome Squidward, but I love it, so I just thought it would be perfect to throw in here. Handsome Squidward is a reference to what Squidward looks like in the episode The Two Faces of Squidward. In this episode, essentially what happens is there is an accident where Squidward gets hit in the face and he becomes handsome. As the episode goes on, he continues to just get hit in the face and he gets sexier and sexier. And then in the end, we end up with this sexy ass Squidward. Up next is My Leg. My leg is this phrase that is screamed by this random fish who actually has a name. His name is Fred. Later on in the series, in season 11 to be exact, Fred actually gets his own episode where his leg no longer gets injured and it is his goal to be able to get back into the hospital. The Battle for Bikini Bottom. This was a 3D Spongebob video game that was originally released for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. There was also a 2D version that was released for the Game Boy Advance. The premise of the game is as follows. Plankton's robots have taken over Bikini Bottom, and Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy must stop them. A lot of people consider this game to be one of the best Spongebob video games due to its gameplay, large worlds, how well it stuck to the source content, and its excellent soundtrack. Personally, I love to play this game. I have great memories of being over at my cousin's house and playing this game with them, trying to beat it and miserably failing. Up next is the seven deadly sins. This is a theory that the main characters of SpongeBob are actually based on the seven deadly sins. And if you're unfamiliar with the seven deadly sins, here they are. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. I'm going to go ahead and go through each one, which character it represents, and give a little explanation as to why. Number one. Pride. The character who is supposedly the embodiment of pride is Sandy. Pride is a deep satisfaction derived from one's own abilities. If you know anything about Sandy, you would know that she is very prideful in herself. She takes great pride in her work, in her homeland, in her abilities, and in herself as a scientist. Up next is greed, and I don't think anybody is going to be surprised by this entry. Mr. Krabs is the embodiment for greed. If anyone, this one fits him especially. Greed is the selfish desire for something. People leave you greed as the desire for wealth. Krabs obviously fits this perfectly. I'm not going to go too deep into himself, but he's just obsessed with money. He literally had his million dollar framed. Now on to Lust. Lust, there are two characters who people typically push into this category. I feel like there's no one really who falls into Lust that much, but the two characters that people consider to be blessed are either Pearl or Spongebob. Pearl, I think, makes a little more sense strictly because lust is an intense sexual desire. It can also be an intense love desire, specifically with this show because we don't see a bunch of sexual desire within Spongebob. I think Pearl fits the best out of this one because she is depicted often as boy crazy or lustful for popularity and she's obsessed with those um, knockoff in sync fish singing characters. Spongebob fits into this one because he just has such an intense love for his friends, his family, his city, and just life itself. 
Up next is Envy, and I feel like this character makes the most sense for this one. It is Plankton. Envy can be described as an insatiable desire and a feeling of jealousy towards another person, either for their material goods or their general lifestyle. And like I said, Plankton isn't a big surprise for this because Plankton is often depicted as deeply envious of Mr. Krabs and is constantly trying to get the things that Krab has, specifically the secret Krabby Patty formula. Third to last is Gluttony, and typically there are two characters who fall under this one. It's either Mrs. Puff or Gary. Gluttony is the overindulgence in food. Mrs. Puff is shown to love food. She loves chocolate and pasta and a bunch of things, and she also is big because she's a pufferfish. Um, Gary can also be put under the category of gluttony because he's a pet snail, and really all he does all day is eat food. Next is Wrath, and Wrath is no surprise to be Squidward. Wrath is uncontrolled feelings of anger and hatred. Squidward is often shown to be very angry at Spongebob or Patrick or literally anything and everything that happens in his life. Squidward is most definitely the most angry character and he is constantly pissed off almost every episode. And finally is Sloth. Patrick is the embodiment of Sloth. Sloth is excessive laziness. And again, I feel like this one isn't a very big surprise. Patrick is very, very lazy. He is unemployed. He literally lives under a rock. He sleeps all day. And if you remember in that one episode when him and SpongeBob do shared parenting, raising this baby clam, Patrick literally does nothing to help raise the baby. The next entry is chocolate. This is in reference to the chocolate with nuts episode. In this episode, SpongeBob and Patrick are selling chocolate bars because they want to be entrepreneurs, but they are going from person to person, house to house, trying to sell these chocolate bars. Two super infamous themes. We have the one guy who the whole episode is just yelling, chocolate! And the other one is when they go to these two old ass ladies and they're trying to sell them chocolate. And this is where these infamous lines were spoken. They're selling chocolate? Aw, oh, chocolate. I remember when they first invented chocolate sweet sweet chocolate i always hated it there are just so many good scenes and quotes from this episode honestly one of my favorite episodes the next entry is titled the first movie is the ending of spongebob this is actually true the spongebob squarepants movie was originally supposed to be the finale for the entire series the creator of spongebob wanted this to be the final but nickelodeon actually ordered more episodes after they had started creating the movie this is no surprise on nickelodeon's part because spongebob was making them so much money so they wanted to keep them in there but the creator of spongebob did not want that so he actually left in 2000 2004 when the movie was coming out and then he ended up coming back to the series in 2015 until he sadly passed away in 2018. Up next is Red Mist. This was originally a creepypasta. In the creepypasta the creator was claiming that he was once an intern working for Nickelodeon and he and his team were asked to watch this episode titled Squidward's Suicide. He said in the episode it shows Squidward preparing for and eventually performing a clarinet recital and at the end of the recital everyone boos him and then Squidward gets this super cursed look on his face and then ends up dying via himself. So the Red Mist was originally considered to be a creepypasta lost media file. This was just proven to be fiction until there was this newer episode titled Spongebob in Random Land where Spongebob and Squidward go to this place called Random Land and the picture, the classic Red Mist picture, actually shows up in the episode. It's honestly a little creepy that the creators of Spongebob decided to throw this in there, especially considering this creepypasta is about Squidward offing himself. Next up is the wormy close-up. If you know Spongebob, Spongebob is infamous for its weird close-ups, and this one is no exception. If you remember the episode with Wormy, Sandy is going away, so she puts Spongebob and Patrick in charge of taking care of her pet called Wormy. Wormy is actually a caterpillar, and if you know, caterpillars end up turning into butterflies. Patrick and Spongebob love Wormy so much, but then Wormy ends up turning into a cocoon because he is a caterpillar, and then he turns into a butterfly. And Spongebob and Patrick are absolutely confused. They think that this butterfly ate Wormy when in actuality it actually is Wormy. And throughout the episode, there are these weird, straight up creepy live close-ups of a butterfly. And honestly, it freaked me and many others out as a child. And when the episode would come on, I would literally turn away when I knew that this close-up of this butterfly was going to pop up because it freaked me out so much. And this actually personally spurred me on to have a fear of butterflies almost all throughout my childhood. Next up is Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom is an episode that featured the town, you guessed it, Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom is a town that is in the aphotic zone. The aphotic zone is a zone in the ocean where there is little to no light in the ocean and so there are a lot of interesting and different creatures living down there. Patrick and Spongebob get off on the wrong bus stop and Spongebob ends up being trapped there. 
this episode just has a very creepy kind of liminal feel to it. He is stuck there and he, the entire episode he's trying to figure out his way out. Next up is the just one bite deleted scene. This is not a creepypasta, this was real life. Um, this is a real deleted scene that was taken away from the episode just one bite. This is the episode where Spongebob gets super thick because he eats a bunch of Krabby Patties, but before he gets thick and breaks into the patty vault, he first has to break into the restaurant and this is where the deleted scene comes in. The deleted scene from this episode involves a trap um, in the restaurant uh, that is trying to prevent people from coming in. The trap is the door has a can of gasoline on top of it and when Squidward opens up the door the can of gasoline falls on him and then there is a match that comes out of nowhere and lights Squidward on fire. This was removed I feel like for an obvious reason. It was removed because people were scared that kids may try to try the same stunt. Next up, Spongebob Popsicle. Yeah these were the effing best. I love the Spongebob Popsicle. Um, I have so many fond memories. It was slightly cursed looking but it was so satisfying to eat in the middle of the summer after chasing down the ice cream truck and honestly they were always like one of the most expensive popsicles on the ice cream truck but I love them so much they had those nice gumball eyes uh, just amazing Glove World. Glove World is an amusement park that both Spongebob and Patrick love to visit. It was first mentioned in the episode Rock Bottom. This is actually where Spongebob and Patrick were coming from when they get stuck in Rock Bottom. I just wanted to include this because I think Glove World is so cute and I love the episodes that feature it. Next is the I Was a Gary deleted scene. This is in reference to some supposed lost media or a false memory that some people have about this episode. This is the episode where Gary is sick and Spongebob has to inject Gary with some snail medicine, but there is an accident where Spongebob and then Squidward turn into snails after after accidentally being injected with the needle. The deleted scene never actually existed, um, but people believe that there was a scene of Squidward transforming into a snail, just like how there was an actual scene of Spongebob turning into a snail. Next is Spongebob. Spongebob is the intentional misspelling of Spongebob's name for a meme. You may be familiar with them. They almost always start with, ah, oh, hell nah, Spongebob, and then something that Spongebob is doing. I love these memes. They are hilarious. Finally, in tier one is Wumbo. Oh, come on, Spongebob. You know. I Wumbo. You wumbo, he she me, wumbo, 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 we'll have the wumbo, wumbology, the study of wumbo, it's first grade, Spongebob. The next year is tier two, titled Casual Sponge. The first entry that I'm going to be covering is that Patrick and Gary are cousins. Yes, you heard this correctly, look at this effing family tree. Read it and weep. They are cousins, legitimately they are cousins. I don't understand how snail and starfish are cousins but apparently they are isn't it messed up that they're literally cousins and patrick is a live talking person and like gets to live an entire life and gary is a pet what what is going on here next up a day with spongebob squarepants this was a mockumentary that was never actually released and this was to be produced by the company regal films the description of the movie that was supposed to happen is as follows Spongebob lives above ground like all Hollywood superstars. Afraid that Spongebob is becoming old news, his boss runs a contest called A Day with Spongebob. The contest makes Spongebob the talk of the town as thousands of kids enter to win. The lucky winner is Seth and he is ecstatic about his day with Spongebob. However, the day becomes a roller coaster as things do not happen as planned. This mockumentary was never released. Originally, they didn't want to release it because they were afraid of legal troubles. It never came to fruition in the end because they were never able to fulfill their crowdfunding goal. Up next is Squidward is not a squid. You heard this correctly. He is not actually a squid despite his name having squid in it he's not one he is actually an octopus i'm not gonna lie researching this iceberg was the very first time that i've ever heard of this and i'm kind of shocked you may be thinking um octopus literally has the prefix octo in it which means eight octopi have eight tentacles and squidward only has six yes this is correct but apparently they just decided to drop two tentacles because this would make animation easier next up is that mr krabs is pearl's sugar daddy theory the theory is basically just what the title of this implies the theory is as follows what if pearl isn't mr krabs actual daughter but he's her sugar daddy this would explain why she calls him daddy and why all she wants from him is money to go shopping this is literally the entire theory but I don't believe it. There are many reasons why this doesn't make sense, but also he literally hired Spongebob to throw a 16th birthday party for her. So number one, that implies that she is a minor. Also, there are so many references in the show to her being his legitimate daughter. There's a lot of other things that would prove this to not be true. So if you want to believe it, it's your prerogative, but I just don't. The next entry is portrayed by Spongebob. This is a reference to a meme format where basically someone just takes a subject and portrays different characters or things in their life with different screenshots of 
SpongeBob, SpongeBob characters or scenes from SpongeBob. Up next is the Alaskan Bullworm. This is an episode featuring, you guessed it, the Alaskan Bullworm. The Alaskan Bullworm is a giant pink worm monster. It is big and scary and pink. SpongeBob believes that he has just seen the Alaskan Bullworm and the town goes into a frenzy. Sandy believes that she can wrangle it just like the bulls that she wrangles in Texas. However, the whole town is trying to convince her, hey, this thing is big and scary, there's no way that you can wrangle it. While Sandy is trying to wrangle it and SpongeBob is trying to stop her, Patrick and the citizens of Bikini Bottom decide to, and I quote, take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else. Eventually, Sandy and SpongeBob lead the worm into abyss and the town is saved, and it is now canonically in a different geographical location thanks to Patrick's suggestion. Next up is Pam Tree. Pam Tree is a YouTube channel known for creating disturbing videos filled with dark humor, and it has a very primitive 3D animation style. He has a lot of videos, but the one that I watched was actually his most recent upload, and it is titled Squirrel Jokes. Squirrel Jokes begins like the stand-up scene in the Spongebob episode with the same title. However, it takes a dark turn when Spongebob decides to release a toxic gas that knocks out the whole crowd, and then Spongebob continues to put each person into a meat grinder. Needless to say, I did not watch any videos after this one. From what I could find on Reddit and different places online, Pam Tree seems to be a little disturbed and is currently trying to work on their mental health. Next is the Neptune theory. This theory is that Poseidon was originally king, but because Poseidon didn't have actual powers and Neptune did, um, Neptune ended up overthrowing him and taking over the crown. Next is Spongebob in real life. This was an art project and people continue to make replicas of extremely cursed 3D realism art of the Spongebob characters. With Spongebob in real life, it gives the characters very real looking human skin texture and it's honestly just really unsettling to look at. Next is Spongebob Spongebob Patrick Patrick. I love this one and it's just this video of some kid showing off his different Spongebob character figurines while singing their names as he gets to each one. It has gotten remixed a few times and it's honestly kind of a bop. Next is, I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. This is in reference to a quote thing that Squidward says. In this scene, Squidward looks as though he is setting up a rope to hang himself, but then he ends up pulling up a baby clam in a cage. It's just kind of some dark humor in the show. Next is, we gotta get Spongebob back. This is a fan-made episode of Spongebob made by Joe here on YouTube, and for some reason, Spongebob is gone. The entire episode is just Squidward being totally unhinged to trying to get Spongebob back. The whole thing honestly feels like a fever dream, and it's pretty bizarre. Next is the magic conch shell. Magic conch shell, will I ever get married? The magic conch shell is a magic eight ball-esque device that appears in the episode titled Club Spongebob, and it is seemingly actually magic. In this episode, Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward are accidentally flung into the kelp forest. Spongebob and Patrick depend on the magic conch shell to help them survive, whereas Squidward in his natural grouchy state, he is very doubtful of their strategies and does not believe that the magic conch shell is doing anything to help them. Spongebob and Patrick ask the shell many questions and actually get helpful answers. The whole time, Squidward is being very doubtful and scowling, but once Squidward gives in and decides to ask the shell a question, Question, the shell just gives him bad answers, resulting in Squidward getting absolutely nothing. We have come for your nectar is a meme. I will put it here on the screen. It's exactly what it looks like. There is a bunch of these fly bobs all around the meme, and Squidward is yelling at them, get the F out of my house. The final entry in this tier that I'm going to cover is the old reliable meme. The old reliable meme is a meme template using this scene from SpongeBob where SpongeBob is showing off his old reliable jellyfishing net. But instead of the net, the poster puts a meme. A lot of times they'll put something that is useful in their own life or something that they would like pull out of their back pocket at the last second to prove something wrong. The final tier that I'm going to be covering in today's video, part one, is Sponge Fan. Again, this is not the final tier in the iceberg, and I will make another video covering the rest of them. The very first entry that I'm going to cover from this tier is Mr. Puff. Mr. Puff is exactly who he sounds like. He is Mrs. Puff's late husband. And what I mean by late husband, he is dead. Mr. Puff was turned into a lamp and is now being sold in the Shell City gift shop that is featured in the very first SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Up next is Mr. Crab Overdoses on I mean, this is a fan-based parody game where you get to play as Mr. Krabs and you sell drugs to other Bikini Bottom citizens in efforts to fund his own ketamine addiction, and the game is described on its own download website as such. Play as Mr. Krabs in this all-new, action-packed platformer. You will fight to the nail in order to make ends meet for your crippling ketamine addiction. A side note about this one is that a very well YouTuber known as Critical or Penguin Zero or Charlie posted many videos of himself attempting and getting a world record speedrun in this game. Next is Nosferatu. Nosferatu Nosferatu is a classic vampire figure who appears in the episode titled Graveyard Ship. This is the episode with the hash-slinging slasher, if you're not familiar. In the episode, Nosferatu ends up being the one who is turning the lights on and off again. Nosferatu! Me and my friends and family always quote this one line. I have no idea why, we just think it's so funny. 
Encyclopedia Spongebobia. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a giant encyclopedia that covers anything and everything Spongebob. A self-proclaimed goal is to create a central information database for everything Spongebob Squarepants related and to make this the most accurate and largest Spongebob Squarepants information database. Squidward is a talented artist. Well, art is subjective, but honestly, Squidward is quite the renaissance man of art. He plays clarinet, paints, dances, sculpts, and can sing. Well, he can sing very off-key. Some, and honestly myself included, believe Squidward to actually be a very talented artist. The problem in the show is that pretty much everyone in Bikini Bottom just don't get it. They don't like his art, they think he's bad at it. Next is the disgusting close-ups. Remember Wormy back a few tears ago? Well, yeah. There were a lot more weird, freaky close-ups aside from that. Some were real-life close-ups such as Wormy, but others were odd animated close-ups of items or characters. Specifically, there's this one random close-up of Patrick's leg hair. I have zero idea why. There are also a lot of weird close-ups of gross Krabby Patties or Spongebob looking extra disgusting. Next is Kid Drowns After Trying to Find Spongebob in the Gang. This is not real. There were these fake rumors going around on an email chain in the year 2002. There are several variations of this rumor, but the gist of it is that some kid was on a boat and decides that they want to go visit Spongebob so the kid jumps off the boat and then subsequently drowns. Again, these were just rumors and it did lead to a few freaked out parents who stopped their kids from watching Spongebob and fears that they would be stupid and try to go find Spongebob in the ocean, but it just wasn't an actual story. Intertidal Zone. This was a comic book that Spongebob's creator Steve Hillenberg created while he was teaching at the Ocean Institute. He made it to quote, help explain the life of organisms living in the tide pools along the Southern California coast in an entertaining way. The book was hosted by this early version of Spongebob, who was adorably named Bob the Sponge. Now we can see where Spongebob got his name from. Get lost, Squidward. This is a quote from the movie Avengers Infinity War. In the movie, Iron Man, aka Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr., says this to Ebony Maw. Ebony Maw is an alien villain who admittedly does look like an alien version of Squidward. Cartoon Beatbox Battles. Cartoon Beatbox Battles is a series on YouTube produced by Verbal Ace where, you guessed it, cartoon characters battle each other via beatbox. There also is a little bit of rapping involved. Spongebob was actually a part of the very first battle, which was posted to YouTube on March 19th of 2016. In this first episode, he faced off against Mickey Mouse, and Spongebob actually appears in several episodes preceding this one and has even gotten a few of his original videos remastered. George and the Gorilla. George and the Gorilla appear in the episode titled I Had an Accident. This is the episode where Spongebob ends up like staying inside for a lot of the episode. This is where we get the classic song, indoors, indoors, you know, where he has like his pal, the chip, and the pen and the napkin. First, we're going to address the gorilla because he is the first one to appear. I'm pulling this directly from the Spongebob wiki page because I couldn't word this any better. He first appears disguised as Patrick, stuffs the real Patrick and Sandy into a pag, and then attacks them, which makes Spongebob finally go outside to save them. The gorilla then grabs Spongebob and tears him in half. Spongebob apologized to Patrick and Sandy for causing everything, declaring that he is no longer scared of going outside but is now terrified of gorillas. They forgive Spongebob and say that they are also terrified of gorillas. This is then where George comes in. Spongebob asks the gorilla what he's doing underwater because obviously gorillas don't naturally appear underwater and he doesn't have a bubble around him like Sandy does. The gorilla panics and then calls George over. George is a horse. Gorilla then rides George into the sunset and the episode ends. George the horse never makes another appearance in the series, but Gorilla appears in three episodes after this one. Blink 182. This refers to an actual piece of lost media from 2005. For over a decade, there was this hunt for a All the Small Things by Blink 182 music video that was originally featured on MTV. The thing that made this video special was that this music video was not the normal one, but instead it was the song that had a video of different 3D scenes of SpongeBob and Spongebob characters dancing and doing things that went along with the lyrics to the song. Like I said, this was an actual real video and eventually someone found it going through different VHS tapes that they had taken of MTV in the mid 2000s and you can actually watch this video here on YouTube now. The video is such a perfect time capsule of the mid 2000s. Even better though, someone took this song and remixed it with the Spongebob Spongebob Patrick Patrick video that I referenced in a few tiers back, which it's just literally amazing, and honestly, it's even better than the original music video. It all started when I was born. I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna be kind of a long entry just because I feel like there has to be more background knowledge. It all started when I was born is a quote in the episode Squid Bob Tentacle Pants. 
In this episode, Cindy has this machine that can transport things. Her machine goes haywire when she's trying to transport SpongeBob to the Krusty Krab, and she accidentally fuses SpongeBob and Squidward together. A lot more happens throughout this episode, but at the end, they are all at Squidward's clarinet concert, and the crowd absolutely hated his performance. However, when the cloak that he is wearing that is hiding the fact that he is fused with SpongeBob comes off, the crowd loves it, and Squidward feels like a star. But then Sandy appears with her fixed machine and unfuses them, which results in everyone getting bored and leaving. Squidward begins toying with the device to try to refuse him and Spongebob so that he can get popular again. However, due to the unreliability of Sandy's science, the machine goes haywire yet again and there is this huge flash on the screen. The scene is then cut to show Squidward talking to a shrink and he is asked where all his problems began, to which he responds, it all started when I was born. The camera then pans out to show this nasty ass fused blob version of all of our beloved Spongebob characters. The art of Spongebob. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this was a little difficult to find information on what this exactly was, but I'm assuming that this is a in reference to the Twitter and Discord pages, which are titled the same exact thing, these two pages are dedicated to posting production art and various other SpongeBob related things. Censored scenes in the UK. I got this list from a website, which again, I'm going to post below. There are several scenes in the UK that have been cut out for honestly good reasons, and we will go over which ones those are. Number one is from the episode Scaredy Pants. Scaredy Pants, they cut out the scene of Patrick shaving off SpongeBob sides with a razor. In the episode Jellyfish Jam, they cut any scenes or slowed down scenes of flashing lights. Presumably, this was to avoid people having seizures if they had epilepsy. Next is pizza delivery. They cut this one quote from Squidward saying, work? Oh, my aching tentacles. I have no idea why this one would get cut out, but it was. In the episode Hooky, they cut the scene of Patrick with nine different hooks in his mouth. Episode Jellyfish Hunter, they didn't actually cut anything, but they decided to just not show the scene where the mysterious guy who's following SpongeBob cuts the fuses, and instead of showing it, they just show the outside of SpongeBob's house and they play the audio. In Out of the Picture, they cut the part where the art appraiser is pretending to hang himself. I'm, I'm assuming they decided to cut a majority of these scenes in an effort to try to avoid any potential copycat injuries from susceptible children who may watch the scenes and decide to try it out for themselves. Squidward on a chair. This refers to a YouTube video uploaded by user Casterio, which is titled the same exact thing. In this video, it is playing the Bon Jovi classic Living on a Prayer Chorus, except when it gets to the actual part where they say, Living on a Prayer, the user sings Squidward on a chair, then inserts this infamous picture of Squidward on a chair. SpongeBob eaten alive. This is another weird, slightly disturbing, very primitive 3D style animated video. It's just kind of weird. You can watch it yourself. Spongepedia. This is yet another Spongebob-centered internet encyclopedia, just like the encyclopedia Spongebobia. It's basically the same thing. Plankton got served. The episode One Course Meal was originally supposed to be titled Plankton Got Served. However, this is not the only thing this entry is referencing. And without further ado, here is the reading of Plankton Got Served. I'm sure many have heard of lost episode creepypastas. They are usually an incredibly graphic episode that conveys such fear for children that was never aired, though someone managed to sneak it in a viewing or owns one of the tapes. Of course, all of these creepypastas are false, yet I remember a Spongebob episode that was heavily altered but still remains in circulation today. This is One Course Meal from Season 7. In the episode, Mr. Krabs finds out that Plankton is horrified of whales and uses it to his advantage. This is one of the least popular episodes in the show due to the dark nature of the episode, even after the episode was heavily altered. Now, how would I have seen this episode before it was edited? It's simple, really. This is one of the seven SpongeBob episodes that was revealed on the internet before it aired on TV. Always a big fan of the show, I was excited of the idea of having SpongeBob episode premiere on the internet before television. I rapidly reloaded the Nick page, and finally the episode came up. It was known as Plankton Got Served, though it eventually changed. Most of the episode is identical to the one that is circulated today. Plankton manages to break into the Krusty Krab and ties up Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob. As he is about to finally get the secret formula from SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs' daughter Pearl walks in. This terrifies Plankton and causes him to run out. Plankton later claims his ancestors were eaten by whales and that's why he fears them so. Mr. Krabs realizes his fear that Plankton has and decides to use it against him. He dresses up as his daughter and begins to follow Plankton around, frightening him. Plankton decides he can no longer take it and decides to take the ultimate decision. Plankton decides to off himself. Yes, this is still in the show today, you are free to watch it. Plankton waits for the bus as he lies in the street, waiting to get run over. That is when Spongebob comes over and tries to convince him to continue his existence. This is where the alteration in the two versions begins. Plankton fails to heed Spongebob's words and remains there. In the altered version that was shown, Spongebob tells Plankton that it was Mr. Krabs as Pearl the entire time and he gets up. In another altered version, Spongebob says the same things, but Plankton refuses to believe him. 
SpongeBob decides that the only thing he can do to show him the truth is to drag Mr. Krabs outside. Soon after he leaves, the typical red bus comes speeding along. Plankton sits up and watches it hit him as everything fades to darkness. Plankton finds himself standing on a single platform overlooking darkness. In the darkness, he sees whales all looking up at him. There are members of his family he can faintly make out, calling for him to jump down. Plankton looks above and sees a light, a light he can scarcely believe. This would seem to represent heaven and hell. Plankton, resigned to his fate, jumps and plunges down into the darkness. This is where the episode ends and the traditional credits are shown, parallel to Plankton's descent into darkness. Now, some of you may say you saw the show as soon as it came available online. Apparently, not fast enough. After seeing the episode online, I reloaded the page to find the altered version shown on the website. I kept reloading, curious of how I had seen the first version. The only answer I could imagine from my viewing of the original episode was that the creators uploaded the wrong file and moments after uploading it realized it as such. I may be the only one who saw this version. I truly do not know the sick ambitions that creators the Spongebob had in mind with this episode. Why would a kid's show portray death? Why would a kid's show portray heaven and hell? Nonetheless, the unaltered version is impossible to find. I've searched as hard as I can, and I've failed to find anything legitimate about the episode I had seen. People told me that I had only seen the altered version, and they were too surprised of the dark themes portrayed in the episode. Nonetheless, I know what I saw. I know people would fail to believe me. People accuse me of just trying to scare people. People would say I have no evidence. There were no photos. There is no video evidence of this occurring. I only saw it once, and it never occurred of me to do such. I know the truth, and I want other people to know as well. And maybe, maybe, somewhere out there saw this episode as well as I, and can confirm it. Until then, I hope you enjoyed reading about my experience. That was Plankton Got Served. Tier 4, Sponge Addict. The very first entry that I will be covering is titled Burger King Spongebob Balloon Theft. Some may like to call this the sponge nappings. This was a series of thefts that occurred in various states across the United States in 2004. As the Spongebob Wiki puts it, on November 11, 2004, when the Spongebob movie promotion started at Burger King, around 4,700 Burger King locations in the United States put this gigantic 9-foot inflatable Spongebob. At first, everything seemed to be going fine. That was until about a month into the promotion when several Burger King locations started to report that their Spongebob inflatable was missing. This started the phenomenon known as sponge nappings. This resulted in many people who had supposedly stolen these inflatables to sell them on eBay for a large amount of money or leave a ransom note. Several news outlets and Burger King locations around the U.S. said that if anyone had found their inflatable Spongebob somewhere or known potentially who had stole the balloon, they would give that person burger bucks, which was good for a year's supplies of original Whopper sandwiches. Pearl's mom. Aside from the fact that Pearl's mom was a whale, there's not much information out there about her. Although, there are plenty of theories all over the internet as to what happened to her slash where she went, and some of these include divorce, she passed away when Pearl was born, Krabs killed her in a war and decided to take Pearl as his daughter out of pity, Krabs used her as Krabby Patty meat, and many others. Like I said, these are theories, so none of them have been proven, but they're just kind of interesting. Smitty Werber Jaegerman Jensen. He was number one! Smitty Werber Jaegerman Jensen first appeared in the episode titled One Krabs Trash. The episode begins with Krabs hosting a yard sale filled with trash. He sells Spongebob this soda drinking hat and Spongebob loves it. However, moments after selling it to Spongebob, Krabs gets offered one million dollars for this hat. So in order to get it back, he goes to Spongebob's house and scares him with a grocery list. Er, I mean a ghost. Instead of returning the hat to Krabs, however, Spongebob found Smitty's grave in the cemetery and buried it with him. This caused Krabs to go to the cemetery to dig it back up. This action pissed off Smitty, then brought back him and a bunch of other dead fish in the cemetery back to life to fight for the hat. But in the end, Krabs ended up winning. Couple fun facts about Smitty Weber Jaegerman Jensen. Number one, he was actually the first instance in the show to portray death. Number two, the Jaeger part of his last name is not featured on his tombstone anywhere. And most of all, he was number one. It's a Wonderful Sponge. This was the original name for the Spongebob movie that came out in 2015. It's a Wonderful Sponge was eventually renamed Sponge on the Run. It was difficult to find out the actual reason for the name change, but I'm assuming it was changed to better fit the plot of the movie. And if you don't know, the plot of the movie is about Garrett going missing, prompting Spongebob and Patrick to go on the road. Thus, Sponge on the Run. Mr. Puff is in Shell City. I've actually basically already covered this entry back in my last video, but I'm going to cover it again. This is a theory slash is just basically the truth. In the show, it is canon that Mrs. Puff's husband is dead, and in the Spongebob movie, when Spongebob and Patrick get to the Shell City gift shop, the camera pans over all of the merchandise. One of the pieces of merchandise is a lamp made out of a pufferfish. It is theorized that this lamp is actually Mr. Puff. It has an uncanny resemblance to the Mr. Puff lamp that is shown in the actual show itself. Hashtag save Spongebob. This is a hashtag that has gone around the internet many times. Essentially, every time there would be a rumor that Spongebob is ending, the hashtag would circulate around the internet again. The most infamous use of this hashtag was in 2014 when this screenshot was floating around. It reads, Spongebob will be canceled on January 28th, 2014. To save Spongebob, repost and tag hashtag save Spongebob. The embarrassing snapshot of Spongebob at the Christmas party. The episode titled The Secret Box from season two is centered around this embarrassing photo. Throughout this episode, Patrick has a secret box in which he refuses to show the contents of. At the end of the episode, after Spongebob is tricked into believing the box only contains a piece of string, it is revealed by Patrick that if the string is pulled, there is a secret compartment that contains this embarrassing photo of Spongebob at a Christmas party. The episode in its current version does not actually show the picture, but a lot of people, including myself, remember that at one point it actually showed the picture. People remembering it to be a picture of Spongebob bent over with ripped pants, low-key looking drunk. There are several fan-made creations of this picture. Most are honestly pretty weird, like this one of Spongebob just getting done having kissed Gary. Goofy Goober is a metaphor for beer. This again is a 
another theory, and the theory is exactly what the title states. A lot of people believe that Goofy Goober ice cream is a parallel for alcohol or beer. Honestly, this does make a lot of sense, especially considering SpongeBob and Patrick seem to get absolutely trashed after spending a long night eating ice cream at Goofy Goobers. Slendy Pants. SpongeBob Slendy Pants is a SpongeBob styled version of the Slender Man game. If you're not familiar with Slender Man, he was a horror figure, started out as a creepypasta, turned into a video game that raged throughout the mid 2000s in popularity. However, in the SpongeBob version, instead of collecting notes, you must collect at least eight Krabby Patties in order to survive. Krabby Patties are made of crabs. This is yet another theory that Mr. Krabs used crab meat to make Krabby Patties. This would explain why we have never seen another crab in the show aside from him. However, this has been bedunked by one of the main animators of the show. Vincent Waller stated there is absolutely no meat in the Krabby Patty, so there you have it. No crabs in a Krabby Patty. Got Milk ad. This is a Lost Media video of a Got Milk promotion featuring Spongebob and Patrick. This ad was first tried in 2001, then the Lost Media file was finally found by a fan in October of 2022. Your Boy Sponge. Your Boy Sponge is a rapper who uses the voices of Spongebob characters to make music and has been around for about a year or so. The music is on Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube, and Your Boy Sponge actually has 617,000 subscribers here on YouTube. The music videos are posted here on YouTube, and the animation is actually pretty good, and the music itself is relatively entertaining. I liked it. Spongebob Badass Pants. This is a meme slash picture slash fan art of our beloved Sponge wearing one of those nerd douche gray sweaters with a really buff human male body. He just kind of looks like a Sigma male. I hope that's your nose. In season three, episode five, titled As Seen on TV, there is a scene where Spongebob is buried under the sand with only his nose sticking out. Some people remember Mr. Crab saying, I hope that's your nose to Spongebob. This is a dick joke if you're not getting it. And it is believed that it had been censored out of this episode. However, original recordings of this episode have been posted around and it was never actually in the episode. Some people do believe that this is the Mandela effect at play because so many people remember it being said in the episode. I don't ever remember it, but some do, I guess. The Bikini Bottom Horror. This is a fan comic created by Reddit users still in the simulation. It started as a one-shot story involving Patrick brutally killing Spongebob and then subsequently eating him. After receiving a lot of positive reactions, the creator decided to continue on with the story. The entire story is posted in various places around the internet, and I will post a link to it in my description. This story is a horror slash thriller with the plot line continuing on to have Spongebob and the gang work to avenge Spongebob's death. Top 10 Spongebob Funny Faces WMV. This is a video originally posted on YouTube on September 3rd of 2011. It has some classical music playing in the background while the video cycles through the apparent top 10 funny faces shown in the show. Guys, in 2020, Spongebob might actually look like this in animation. This is a video clip from a set of twin YouTubers, Extreme Games. Many people have taken this and made a meme of it, inserting silly pictures into the 2020 side or just simply making fun of these twins. Usually I would feel bad for people making fun of other people, but these twins have like literally faked their death and faked serious illnesses, so um, I don't really care at all. Girly teen girl. This is the character who appears in the episode titled The Slumber Party. In this episode, Pearl is having a slumber party and Mr. Krabs is fiending to know what is going on inside of his house. So in Girly Teen Girl, the new girl from Farawayville, who looks strikingly similar to SpongeBob, appears at the doorstep of the Krabs residence. Pearl and her friends throw tomatoes at her because they believe that she is SpongeBob trying to spy on them. Girly Teen Girl then runs away crying and is revealed that that, in fact, was not SpongeBob. Then SpongeBob calls her ugly. Poor Girly Teen Girl. 20 Fat Hill Revolution. I'm pulling this from the YouTuber fandom wiki because I could not explain this any better. 20 Fat Hill is an Indonesian YouTuber best known for creating 10 hour loops of popular cartoons, memes, and most notably of SpongeBob SquarePants. In 2016, he started making 10 hour loops of famous SpongeBob SquarePants scenes. The videos ended up being very successful and started a new renaissance and interest in his channel. However, turbulence was starting to rise by then when Viacom took down his first account. 20 Fat Hill would make another new account, but shortly after, Viacom would also take that one down. The cycle would continue until he made his current account, 20 Fat Hill Revolution. So essentially, this YouTuber just kept getting his videos taken down for posting too much SpongeBob, and Viacom got pissed off and took his channels down multiple times. So the revolution is him making yet another account. And that was the last of tier four, and now we are on to tier five, Sponge Enthusiast. The very first entry I'll be covering in this one is Goo Lagoon is oil. This is a fan theory that Goo Lagoon is an oil spill. However, this actually makes zero sense. Goo Lagoon is a pool in the SpongeBob universe that appears to be on the seafloor. It could not possibly be oil because oil has a lower density than water and thus it floats on the surface. More likely than not, Goo Lagoon is actually a brine pool. A brine pool is a pool of water that is on the seafloor. The water in a brine pool has a higher salinity, at least 125% more than the water around it, thus making it more dense and sinking beneath the regular seawater and making it darker in color. The only issue with the brine pool being Goo Lagoon is that fish can't survive in brine pools due to the lack of oxygen and high salt content. However, fish don't live there, they just swim there, so it's entirely possible and likely that Goo Lagoon is actually a brine pool and not an oil spill. SpongeBob leaks your IP address. This is a meme that is typically in video form. It starts by showing a cheery picture of SpongeBob and then an IP address is shown on the screen. Presumably, these videos are doxing the people who are watching. Understandably, a few people were pretty freaked out when they would come across these videos, but it's mostly just funny and there have been many recreations, many videos, many pictures recreating this meme. The Bikini Bottom Triangle. The Bikini Bottom Triangle is a Bermuda Triangle-esque location in the SpongeBob universe that first appears in the episode Welcome to the Bikini Bottom Triangle. The triangle is an island that sits at an unknown location in the ocean and is populated by mermaids. It's entirely filled with other people's junk that the mermaids have stolen. They steal things by singing, which then opens up a giant vacuum that sucks up the junk. This episode was originally going to be named Welcome to the Bermuda Triangle, so the location is truly meant to replicate the idea slash feels of the triangle. Also, as a side note, I recall being absolutely terrified of the Bermuda Triangle. As a child, I really thought that it was going to be a lot more of a threat than it actually is. Patchy is insane. I feel like it's pretty well known that Patchy is a pirate 
moderate that is obsessed with SpongeBob and is the host of a variety of SpongeBob special episodes. He's the president of the SpongeBob Fan Club and has a ton of SpongeBob SquarePants paraphernalia. The idea that he is actually insane is a fan theory based on his uncanny actions throughout the series. He's supposed to be a pirate, but he lives in a ranch house in the suburbs of Los Angeles. Also, Potty the Parrot, his beloved bird friend, is very clearly a puppet. He also consistently has moments where he meets slash speaks to SpongeBob that are seemingly and usually just hallucinations of his own. So all of this added together creates this fan theory that all of these instances are just patchy being insane. Squidward 64 trailer. This is a YouTube video that begins with a scene of Squidward being thrown into a picture frame. Then it shows Super Mario 64, but instead of it being the traditional game, it has a bikini bottom as the setting and Squidward as the main character. Other versions of this video differ slightly where instead of having bikini bottom themed terrain, it's the normal game with a bunch of Squidward PNGs pasted on random characters or places. SpongeBob killed a lot of people. This is not a theory, it's just true. It's been heavily implied and at times even explicitly shown that SpongeBob's actions have killed many bikini bottom citizens. There's literally a scene where Sandy tells SpongeBob that he can't go to the moon with her because of his mishap with her whirly bird machine. And then the camera pans to show a window that reveals a bunch of tombstones, implying that SpongeBob's accident has killed a bunch of these people. Aside from that, there are so many other instances in which SpongeBob caused mass destruction in the city with fire and chaos raging while people scream and run around. So yes, SpongeBob has canonically at the very least committed mass manslaughter. Human canon versions of SpongeBob and Patrick. This is in reference to a Nickelodeon released live action special. This featured the SpongeBob characters venturing onto the surface and becoming real life people. The canon real life versions of the characters were actually just the voice actors dressed up in costumes. Survival the SpongeBob the Killer. This is a Roblox SpongeBob themed survival game created by Mr. Flim Flam. It has a really silly name and is actually a parody of a another Roblox survival game titled Survival the Jeff the Killer. Survival the SpongeBob the Killer is extremely low effort and it is filled with many low quality free models. The creator of this game actually has a YouTube account titled Flamingo in which he has posted several gameplay videos and these videos are actually what first launched the game into success. Over time, the game has fell out of popularity, but in its prime, it had millions of plays. No more getting nailed. In the episode Life of Crime, SpongeBob and Patrick decide to steal a balloon, which actually turns out to be free in the end, and then they flee their homes. It's rumored that in the original edit of the show, while SpongeBob and Patrick are talking about what they are going to leave behind when they're fleeing their homes, SpongeBob says, no more getting nailed, and then it shows Patrick hammering a nail and bored into his forehead. They first replace this with a scene of SpongeBob saying, no more getting mail, and then Patrick still hammering the nail into his forehead, and then it was just SpongeBob saying, no more getting mail, because hammering a nail and bored into your forehead is unnecessarily violent, I guess. If this quote was actually in the show, it was likely removed to the fact that getting nailed is a sexual innuendo for, you know, getting laid, getting boned, you know. Apparently, one of the show animators said that this was never actually in the episode and people are just misremembering it. So it's kind of similar to the case of another entry in the previous tier. SpongeCry.avi. This is a last media creepypasta. This poster claims that they had found a recording of a rare SpongeBob episode, but when they pressed play, it was nothing like the typical show. The episode was six minutes and four seconds long and featured many unsettling and disturbing scenes. It first began with SpongeBob crying, hence the title, and then the camera pans to show Gary, but instead of a normal Gary, he was a rotting corpse that had been mauled to death. The rest of the video contains scenes of SpongeBob either crying, running frantically, and an odd scene of the Krusty Krab just sitting silently. There have been a few fan created videos that are posted here on YouTube if you are interested. Torture Dungeon and Snowball Effect. The episode Snowball Effect is the one where SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward have a snowball fight. The Torture Dungeon is a deleted scene that was actually supposed to air in the original episode, but it was cut before the episode had actually aired. The Torture Chamber was a snowman torture chamber that was supposed to be inside of Squidward's fort. If you remember, he built like this giant fort because he like got a little too into the snowball fight. I believe that this was cut actually because of time constraints, not necessarily due to the dark nature of the scene. Considering the fact that there is a scene in another episode titled Suds where Patrick and SpongeBob are in an actual torture chamber, so I'm pretty sure this was just cut due to the fact that the episodes need to be around 11 minutes long. Sponge. This is a Friday Night Funkin' mod that features SpongeBob as an antagonist for the main character who the player playing the game plays as. He cusses and is overall very abrasive and rude, like nearly all the foes in Friday Night Funkin'. And for Sponge, there are seven playable songs in this mod. The creator of this mod kept getting a lot of backlash from people because they kept wanting more and more from him, so he got too stressed out and then just kind of quit the project overall. There were a few unfinished songs from him and a few other unfinished parts of the project that he eventually released to the public. This next one I'm gonna have a little bit of difficulty pronouncing, so I'm sorry if I say it wrong. Sponge Fee Forma. Oh, Sponge? Sponge Fee Forma. Forma. Oh, Sponge Fee Forma. Sponge. Oh my gosh. Sponge Fee Forma Square Pantsy. New to science in 2011, this is a fungus slash mushroom that was adorably named after SpongeBob due to its sponge like look. Its common name, so its non scientific name, is SpongeBob Square Pants Mushroom. This is just so cute. Like they named a fungus after SpongeBob. How legendary is that? Trail of the Snail. This is a SpongeBob themed online game. Here's the description of the game that I found on archive.org. SpongeBob is trying to find Gary, who ran away since SpongeBob did not feed him. SpongeBob goes to multiple locations to find him, which include Patrick's house, Squidward's house, Krusty Krab, Hats, the Chum Bucket, Bum's Alley, Martha's Craft Zone, and Granny's house. In each area, multiple characters would be around, most of them resembling the character the player is looking for. Every character has a twin. The game is played by using SpongeBob's paddle to plunk the pairs of twins, which disappear if they are identical, until only one character is left, the one the player is looking for. Plunking the character the player is looking for makes them have to restart the area. There's also a timer, and the player loses if the timer runs out. Bubbles, jellyfish, and blowfish can be clicked for bonus points. At the end of every level, there is a bonus round in which many bubbles, jellyfish, and blowfish appear, which can be clicked for bonus points again. There is a total of eight levels in the game. The game ends when the player beats the final area or runs out of time. This game is essentially just a matching game, but despite the simplicity of the game's design, I actually find it kind of difficult.
difficult to beat it, especially considering I was playing on my laptop, so it was kind of hard to like click around to each character and get them out before the time ran out. I will leave a link to the game in my description below if you have any interest in playing it. And nothing happened. This is a meme that begins with Crap, SpongeBob, and Squidward happily dancing to some uplifting music. Quickly, the scene would become more and more distorted with the three dancing over tops of scenes of destruction, the music becoming more spooky, and the characters creepily working. I will link the video down below if you want to watch it yourself. Nickelodeon stole SpongeBob fan art for a SpongeBob promo. In 2019, SpongeBob fan Matt Salvador said that Nickelodeon had stole his fan made SpongeBob background in a SpongeBob Lego promo. This is the original fan art, and this is the promotion. I just find it really bizarre that they would steal a fan's art, considering that there are so many possibilities when dropping the SpongeBob terrain, and they really could have easily made something else. You know, they have so many animators aboard. I feel like it was totally unnecessary to steal someone's art, but they did, and a lot of people are disappointed by it. Tier 6 Researcher Sponge. The very first entry that I'm covering is Spongebob on SNL. Saturday Night Live used to have this animated bit called Ex-Presidents. One of the episodes featured Spongebob. And the cool thing is they actually got Tom Kenny, who is the actual voice actor for the real Spongebob, to voice their Spongebob. He was in the episode for about two minutes in which the ex-presidents were having him film an American propaganda video. Here's the actual plot. Spongebob hosts his own propaganda short, but things take a turn for the worse when he says he doesn't feel comfortable doing it because it feels racist. Yes, you get to hear Spongebob say the word racist. It's so bizarre. Consider myself a patriot, but I'm not comfortable doing this. I mean, it just seems really racist. Once he tries to leave, the ex-presidents capture him and put him in a cage and then threaten to frame him for having CP on his laptop. Then it is up to the Powderpuff Girls to come to his rescue. Tom Kenny wasn't allowed to do any more voice acting bits like this with the Spongebob voiceover ever again. Spongebob Doppelganger The Spongebob Doppelganger was another anthropomorphic sponge who resembles Spongebob, hence his name. He was planned to be in the episode Dunces and Dragons, but they decided to not put him in the end version. Despite being removed from the actual episode, the Spongebob Doppelganger is still listed in the credits and was voiced by some guy named Roger Bumpus. 100 million fans can't be wrong. I'm taking this off of a website because I just couldn't have described this better. A press kit titled 100 Million Fans Can't Be Wrong designed in part to celebrate Spongebob's 10th anniversary. The inspiration began from the album cover 50 Million Elvis Fans Can't Be Wrong. The kit contains an 18 by 24 poster with all of the characters that ever appeared on the show, a DVD of the first ever Spongebob Squarepants pilot, a presentation CD with press releases, and a 12 page booklet of famous celebrity quotes including President Barack Obama. Printed including varnish, embossing, and gold leaf application. Dear Jesus, please spite my enemies. The creator of Chowder made some fan art of Spongebob. Uh, yeah, this is real fan art. It's pretty hilarious, actually. Spongebob, hope is lost. This is a supposed lost episode. Before I describe it, I want to tell you the categories that this can be found on the Fandom Wiki website. It's in Lost Episodes, Dismemberment, Demon Slash Devil, and Spongebob. Dismemberment? Demon? Last video we had a last episode creepypasta about heaven and hell, and now we have dismemberment and demons. I, I don't know what's up with these people. The synopsis of this creepypasta is that the writer was once an intern at Nick. One day he was offered the opportunity to watch an unreleased video, but once he arrived in the editing office, he was locked in a room and was practically forced to watch this bizarre episode. It began with the title, You Nosy Intern You Shouldn't Have Come In Here. Then the episode started with minutes of Spongebob sleeping. The scene then creepily transitioned into what seemed to be Spongebob's dream. The dream was extremely disturbing, sadistic, and beyond gory. It showed several disgusting scenes of our beloved characters dismembered and disemboweled, with Spongebob appearing as some sort of demonic creature who did this to all of them. Then, the show began to affect real life, when the building started shaking, and a demon appeared on screen telling the guy that his world was next, and subsequently, the laptop catches on fire. The man then wakes up, and he is in a break room on the floor screaming. This seemed to all have been a dream. But then, the story has this plot twist, with the writer having seemingly become possessed with the same thing that he saw Spongebob be possessed with in the episode. He then dismembers a person in his real life. So... Yeah! My Fair Plankton. This is much less disturbing than the last entry. This was the original title for the episode, Fun. It was in reference to the musical titled My Fair Lady. The musical is about a guy who takes up the task of turning a working class girl into a member of high society. The episode of Spongebob has a really similar plot, with Spongebob taking it upon himself to help reform Plankton and make him have friends. I'm a goofy goober, yeah. This error message. This is an error message that pops up in the game Undertale. I've never played the game, but the error messages pop up occasionally through the game, and this is one of them. Spankbab in tidy whitey tumble files. 
Tidy Whitey Tumble is a Spongebob video game that was released in 2009. It is a catapult game where you fling Spongebob by his underwear. In the game files of the Tidy Whitey Tumble game, there is this spooky image. This is not the only time where there is a bizarre picture hidden in the files of a Spongebob game. I feel like Spongebob media and actually a lot of children media are, is kind of famous for having weird things buried in their files. 1-800-EAT-CHUM. This is the phone number for the chum bucket. It was revealed in the episode Gary's New Toy when Spongebob was laying beneath a bus bench that had the number on it as an advertisement. 1-800-EAT-CHUM, EAT-CHUM. And if you didn't get that, that was to uh, the tune of AutoZone. Or was it Auto Parts? Whatever. One of those auto commercials. No, wait, wait. Safe Auto. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Safe, safe, auto. So not Auto Parts. Safe Auto, which I think is car insurance. So I was way off. Spongebob Yellow and Patrick Star Pink. In May of 2019, Nick and Pantone released these official colors to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Spongebob. I kind of love that they did this, but could you imagine going home with a date and they open their bedroom door and the whole place is the official Spongebob color? I just, I can't, I can't imagine like any room painted these colors, but it's also pretty epic. Class B Cuspo Error. Class B Cuspo, eh. Class B Cuspo, oh my gosh, this is a freaking tongue twister. Class B Cuspo is the animation company who is best known for producing and animating Rugrats, the Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, and a few others. They, however, did not animate or produce SpongeBob. This entry is referring to this one time during the end credits of SpongeBob, instead of showing the United Plankton Pictures logo, which is usually what was at the end of SpongeBob, it showed the Class B Cuspo. Some people have made theories on whether or not this was intentional some think that the file was accidentally put into the episode. Others think that they did it to prank kids because apparently a lot of kids found the Class B Cuspo logo animation to be kind of scary. Tier 7, Extreme Sponge Addict. The very first entry that I'll be covering in this tier is titled Target Middle Finger. In 2001, when the SpongeBob crew was working on a commercial for Target, they drew this humorous picture of SpongeBob flipping the bird with the words, Employee of the Month above him. Little Floater's Wild Weekend. This is an audio-only Spongebob episode in which the plot surrounds a blubble blowing contest. It released on the album The Q People, published by Spirit House Records. It's like a regular episode of Spongebob, but it has a few songs by The Q People in it. There isn't very much information about it out there, and the only person to speak on it was Tom Kenny, who is the voice of Spongebob. Also, he was only talked about it once, and that was on the CD itself. So it's kind of elusive. Plankton in All-Stars Brawl. Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl is a video game that is a direct mirror of the Nintendo game Super Smash Bros. Brawl. He was originally considered to be a part of the game as a playable character, but was decided to be left out initially. Instead of a playable character, there is this game mode called Plankton Ball. This is a team versus team game where the object of the game is to get the Plankton Ball into the other team's star goal. Gary is a god. This is a fan theory posted in video format on the YouTube channel The Theorizer. The video in reference is titled Gary Theory Number 3, Gary the Snail is an Alien God. In the two previous videos he posted about this theory, he sets up the idea that Gary is not truly a snail, but was once an alien dolphin. And not just any alien dolphin, one by the name of Bubbles from the movie Sponge Out of Water. The theorizer says that Bubbles was a part of a group of dolphins who were responsible for creating Bikini Bottom. The video series that the theorizer made surrounding this is very intriguing and I recommend you check it out. He goes pretty in depth about it. Tea at the Treedom Book this is the very first Spongebob Squarepants themed book to ever have been published. The book itself is nothing wild, the plot is based on the episode with the same name with only a few differences. It was published in 2000 and was the first of very many Spongebob chapter books. Original 1997 book pitch. This is the original pitch bible for the show. Although it was not originally supposed to be called Spongebob Squarepants, it was first pitched as Spongeboy Ahoy. It contains a lot of unseen artwork, original prototypes of characters and places. There is also so much interesting information. Apparently, Sandy was originally supposed to be quote unquote the apple of Spongeboy's eye, which we see a lot in the first few episodes, like they're very flirty. Pearl was also to be quite possibly the most intelligent citizen because she had the largest brain. And instead of Plankton being obsessed with obtaining the secret Krabby Patty formula, he was instead originally supposed to be wanting to steal Spongeboy because he thought that Spongeboy was the secret to Krab's success. There are plenty of other really neat things in here, and I will leave a link below if you want to check it out yourself. Five Nights at the Krusty Krab. FNAF, it's a parody game based on FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's, that was released eight years ago by its creator, Sinkaroonie. 
The general idea and fear factor of the game is nearly identical to the game of FNAF. Spooky animatronics, nighttime, working a horrible job for very little pay. Ooh. FNAF is described by its creator as Mr. Krabs has opened a brand new Krusty Krab in the city, staffed completely by animatronic versions of his old employees. Because it was cheaper than paying their salaries, you are hired as the night watchman at this new restaurant. However, strange things begin to happen as the lights go out and you find yourself in a greater danger than you had expected. 72505. This is yet another lost episode creepypasta. In my opinion, it is in no way as near as disturbing as the Hope is Lost creepypasta. The pasta tells the story of how one time Nickelodeon aired an oddly glitched and unsettling episode of Spongebob. The episode was the two combined, Your Shoes Are Untied and Gary Takes a Bath. A few people have edited videos like this one to recreate what had supposedly been aired in 2005. I personally don't believe this actually aired, but you can believe what you like. Now leaving Bikini Bottom. There is a few things that this could have been, but I decided to go with this one because I think it's kind of funny. This is the title of the pilot episode in the fan series titled Room of Four. The plot is described as Squidward, Mrs. Puff, Plankton, and Karen one day decide to leave Bikini Bottom and live together. After packing and saying their goodbyes, they head for the bus station and head for St. Louvar. After arriving, the four purchase a room in the Green Algae Home Apartment. I couldn't find any video for it, but the story is posted on the Sponge Fan and Wiki, and it is a pretty bad read, but also super hilarious. Quarantine Crabs Will Never Air Again This is the 263rd episode of Spongebob and is considered to be among one of the worst Spongebob episodes. For starters, the plot of the episodes bears a lot of similarities to the Rona lockdown slash quarantine and was originally scheduled to be aired on November of 2020. However, it was withheld until mid-2022 due to the episode themes. Yeah, if it had been posted in 2020, that would have been like super bad timing. And when it was actually aired, it became one of the lowest rated episodes of Spongebob and fans and critics alike just kind of dump on this one all the time and say it's one of the worst. Bob Sponge Lawsuit In 2007, a man sued Nickelodeon for apparently, quote unquote, stealing his idea to create Spongebob. In the early 90s, Troy Walker created a comic strip about an anthropomorphic sponge named Bob Sponge and even sold around 1,000 of these shitty kitchen sponges with faces drawn on them with Sharpie and googly eyes glued to them around Northern California during this time. He believed one of the creators of Spongebob must have gotten their hands on the comic at some point and created Spongebob. Walker eventually lost a lawsuit to Nickelodeon due to being unable to prove or provide evidence that Nick had actually copied and created a substantially similar work. Although it may seem weird that there are not only two anthropomorphic sponges, but both were named Bob, that is just about where the similarities end. Also, as my own little note, a few tiers back I covered the unpublished comic created in the 80s by Steven Hillenberg titled The Intertidal Zone. The host of this comic was a sponge who goes by the name of Bob. So although some may believe Nick just stole Walker's idea for a sponge named Bob, I don't even think that's the case. I just believe it's simply a funny coincidence. Mother claims Spongebob told her to kill her three-year-old daughter. Before I start this one, I do want to say that this one talks about child abuse and drugs and actual child murder. So if you would feel uncomfortable listening to that or would feel triggered, I'm going to put a timestamp on this video if you don't want to hear about this one. Anyways, yes, this is a real thing and not a creepypasta. Just last year, 22-year-old Justine Johnson was charged with first-degree child abuse and felony murder. Justine was experiencing withdrawal from heroin, used cocaine that day, and hadn't slept in over two weeks. Supposedly, she was having hallucinations that SpongeBob SquarePants was threatening to kill her unless she killed her daughter. Justine stabbed her daughter several times, then put her in a trash bag in the home, which was later then found by her younger brother. I couldn't find her official sentencing. However, she had the possibility of facing life in prison for her violent crime. Lost Baseball Animation as it says in the title, it is a piece of supposed lost media. On the Lost Media Wiki website, Soup Nerd made this post on February 20th of 2018. Back in 2005, I was on a trip with my family and some friends in Texas. While we were there, we stopped by a baseball game. Before the game started, an animation played of Spongebob giving a lecture about having fun. I don't remember much about it, but I do know for a fact that a Spongebob animation played before the baseball game got started. The thing is, I've been unable to find it anywhere online. If that wasn't perplexing enough, I heard something back then that there was also an Incredibles animation that played at one point a while ago, but I doubt that holds true at all. The hunt for this lost media still goes on to this day and we haven't really gotten any closer to finding it. So it's possible that it's not real or at least it was not actually created by Viacom. All right, final tier. Tier eight, my life is all about SpongeBob. The very first entry for this one is Sandy gets arrested. 
the great snail race deleted scene. All right, this was very difficult to find any information on, let alone actual video evidence. At the end of the episode, the great snail race, after Sandy kicks SpongeBob out of the frame, she apparently gets arrested. This was literally all I could find on this, so if you would like to do your own research to try to find more, go for it. SpongeBob in Chabahar. This is a bootleg slash ripoff Persian SpongeBob movie. I don't speak Farsi, so I don't really know what the movie's actual plot is, but I don't really need to know the language to know it was hilarious watching it. Watching through, here is what I could gather about the plot. SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs have come to the surface, and for some reason, SpongeBob has a water gun and Mr. Krabs has a plastic recorder. They then hop into the back of a shipping truck. Once they're at this shipping facility, spy music plays and they start creeping around. And I presume that they're there to perform a heist of some kind. The movie is pretty low budget, but honestly, the character costumes aren't too awful. I just wish I could speak the language so I could know what was like actually going on. Plaguefish. This is yet another lost episode entry. The most I could find on this was on the Lost Media Archive fandom page. Here's what it said. Plaguefish was intended to be the seventh episode of season seven of SpongeBob SquarePants. Halfway through filming in 2009, it was decided that the plot would be too controversial and violent for young children to understand. So the episode was scrapped and replaced with The Curse of Bikini Bottom. The page for this on the Lost Media Archive is up for deletion due to having no evidence that it was actually real. And that's really all I could find. I couldn't even find an actual creepypasta on it so I'm not totally sure where it came from. Fools in April hair error. On Reddit, a user posted this screenshot from the episode Fools in April. As you can see, there's a little bit of human hair in the clip. Some people in the comments of the post believe that it got caught on a layer in the cell animation screen. Just to clarify, cell animation is the traditional style of animation where the pictures are hand-drawn and then transferred onto transparent pieces of plastic sheets. So, the comments were speculating that during this transition process, a piece of hair probably got stuck in there. Everywhere at the end of Bikini Bottom. This is a parody album created by the artist The Sponge Taker. It's a parody of the album Everywhere at the End of Time by The Caretaker. The original album is actually a series of six albums that portray the descent into dementia. It begins with music that seems eerily familiar, and as the six-hour album progresses, the music becomes more fuzzy. Although the themes of the parody album are much more lighthearted, it's also still about the degradation of memories, but specifically childhood memories. I didn't listen to every song on the album, but I enjoyed the few that I did listen to. It's songs like the album it's parodying. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm gonna make it a word all have a very familiar feel that progressively becomes more fuzzy as the album goes on. If you want to listen to the album, I'll link the Bandcamp webpage that I found it on below. r slash Spongebob Gore. This is a Reddit community dedicated to posting gory scenes from the actual show and gory fan art. The page itself only has 2,000 members and it is rarely posted to. Honestly, it was not nearly as disgusting as I thought it would be. I mean, yes, it's super weird that there is a whole page strictly dedicated to gory Spongebob scenes, but it wasn't as bad as some other things in this iceberg and definitely not as bad as some things that are on Reddit. Ed's World Spongebob Test. This is an animation created by Ed Gould posted to the website titled Sheezy Art in 2007. It is an animation of Ed and his friend Matt walking along to the Spongebob song Now That We're Men. Ed sadly passed away from cancer in 2012 and his friends have kept his memories alive through Ed's old channel titled Ed's World. I'm assuming that this was put into the iceberg because I think for a while this video was considered to be lost media and eventually it was found. Creepy Spongebob VHS Tape Fire Remains this is a YouTube video of some Spongebob footage that begins with the episode of Squirrel Jokes. However, it is not normal footage, but the footage is pulled from a charred VHS tape. YouTube creator Owen Fishbatch posted it in 2015 explaining that his house had caught fire in 2006 and he had kept this burnt VHS. When he finally watched the tape some years later, he found it to be, and I quote, Spongebob episodes melded together with one of my tapes from my trip to Japan sometime around 1980. The video has some generally unsettling footage and super crunchy audio. Again, it will be linked down below in the description if you want to check it out. Krabby Quest. This is a Spongebob casual adventure game that was released in 2005. Krabby Quest was originally released on the Nick Arcade and was available for download on Windows. And bruh. When I looked at the archive page on the Wayback Machine, it was priced at $6.99. Are you seeing this footage? Honestly, I can't decide if I think that is highway robbery or a good deal considering animated games in 2005 weren't like amazing and superb. So I think it's kind of awesome that they were able to download it on Windows, but I still think that's kind of priced high. Squidward Fan 1982. The most I could find on this one is that he was a SpongeBob fan who used to post to YouTube. However, his channel was taken down after he had taken his own life in 2010. 
I can't find any actual articles or news clips that verify that this is real, so I partially believe that this may be something just spread around the internet and SpongeBob icebergs. Brazilian defecation broadcast. This one is what I believe to be a copypasta slash creepypasta or whatever you want to call it, but it is some supposed lost media. Apparently, during the 2016 Brazilian Olympics, the broadcast in Brazil was hijacked by hackers. These hackers showed an episode of Spongebob that included a frequency that made people shit themselves. No, I'm not joking. After this happened, all proof of it was deleted from the internet by the Brazilian government and CIA. However, there was a whistleblower in the CIA who released some of the footage into the dark web. Then, Truth Seeker 2031 here on YouTube posted this recovered audio slash footage. I 100% believe that this is a fake lost media situation and I even watched the video myself, but if you're daring enough and wanting to shit yourself, I'll link the video in the description below. Last entry. Official Spongebob Twitter account posting a GIF including one frame of the Wyoming incident. I want to provide a little background knowledge for those who may not know about the Wyoming incident or what it is. I'm taking this description from tvtropes.com because I can't describe it any better. The Wyoming incident is an internet horror ARG creepypasta that began in 2016. Considered to be the first horror-based internet ARG as well as possibly the first creepypasta, the Wyoming incident originated as a tale about a video that reportedly drives videos to madness. This video is the recording of a supposed signal broadcast interruption of a Wyoming news station that resulted in mass confusion and terror brought upon by the infrasonic frequencies contained within the hijacking. So yes, this is another hijacking incident that has a strange effect on its viewers. But they're not shitting themselves this time. They're dying. How does this relate to Spongebob? The Spongebob official Twitter account replied to a comment with a GIF and said GIF contained one frame from the Wyoming incident videos. It's pretty weird and creepy and it's actually 100% true. If you want to check out the post yourself, I'll have it linked below in my description. That was the last of the iceberg. It feels a little bittersweet to end this little series, but I also feel so grateful for the support that I've gotten thus far. If you made it this far in the video, hi! Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you did like it, please leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing if you want to see more content from me or drop a comment or do all three. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.